Hello YouTube friends. <laughs> this little video is kind of like an add-on to the tidying up my drawers video because if you remember, uh, I think it was on the second part of that, I unearthed a loads and loads of scraps of fabric and I was a little bit overwhelmed by them all, uh, a bit daunted by them all <laughs> until I read all the comments from people who said Make a scrappy quilt, Kate. Use all the scraps and do string piecing and scrappy, scrappy. So I looked at a few YouTube videos and I looked at some Pinterest boards and then I went upstairs and I dug out some more of my boxes full of scraps and I upended one of them and found in the bottom of it all of those four inch squares that I've already done. Actually, half of those, because I've made some more since then. So I can't even remember doing those. But years ago, I must have thought, I'll use up all my red and pink scraps by uh, making a scrappy quilt. So I'm using the same format as I did then. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what, because I've got this, my lovely new camera. Let's just do a zoom in, shall we? Hi, Norma. So there they are, look. And if you can see on the far side, I put some green behind them, thinking that I might do green sashing uh, between each block so that it wouldn't be all so tight up against one another. I don't know. Along with that, I took my trusty sewing machine. It was not behaving very well at all. I took it to be repaired. It's come back like a new machine. I'm thrilled with it. So I was sewing on it the other night and I honestly couldn't believe firstly how quiet it is and how well it's behaving. So I've got all my bits and pieces of, I'm going to do red, pink, red and pink. Because I have a lot of red and pink scraps. A lot of red and pink scraps. So I looked at a fair few uh, tutorials about how to construct these little base pieces and there's Robin at RS Island Crafts. RS Island Crafts? I think that's her name. It is. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, some of you might already follow her. She uh, has a whole series on making string piecing and scrappiness and as well somebody else in the uh, comments said oh you should watch Bonnie Hunter I used to watch Bonnie Hunter all the time. I'd forgotten. Honestly, don't get old. It's, the brain cells die at a rapid rate. And so <laughs> I used to put Bonnie on her quilt cams when I was sewing. And I would just have it, you know, watch her stringing together all her mystery quilts and her um, block of the month or whatever. Um, um, in, in her basement at Quiltville. I used to do it all the time and I don't know why I stopped. I, probably when I moved away from quilting quite so much and into maybe bookmaking or something else, spinning, you know, I didn't listen to them quite so much then and I've forgotten I used to listen to them all the time. So I've listened to a couple more of Bonnie with her vintage sewing machines and it's got me back into the bug of stitching these little pieces together. I have an idea for what's going to happen to it, but we'll wait until I've finished it before I launch my idea. So what I'm going to do now then is I'm just going to, Bonnie Hunter style, I'm just going to sew a few of these blocks and chat to you. I haven't got a vintage sewing machine. That is not what I've got. I've got this lovely, just been come back from the, from the Menders genome here, which uh, is the same maker's new home. That new home is like the unbranded genome. So I've got these little blocks here. I've got scrap after scrap after scrap that I'm cutting up and I've got my ironing board set up. And so this is like a an add-on project for the um for the draw tidying out, isn't it? So I'm going to put this away so that the cat doesn't eat it. And um we're going to see if we can get on and do some more of these. I wonder if this will work. Let's try, shall we? Let's try. I've got my rotary cutter and my cutting um, mat here. I've got my iron set up here. 
so that I can press as I go. And we'll just do a few blocks, eh? Let's move the camera so that you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> we won't move it that drastically. How's that? Is that going to work, I wonder? OK, I think so. Just have a bit of water. OK, now I actually haven't got the iron plugged in. I won't plug the iron in until I've done a bit of sewing. And I do need my glasses on when I'm sewing. I can't tell you how cool it is to have this machine back fixed. OK, let's get that lined up there. So what I'm doing then is I'm just sewing bits together and then I'll find uh, another bit that's about the same size as it. Let's get everything over here. So that, um, and I'm just trying to stick to um, a red and pink palette so that, uh, so that those two fit together nicely there. So I'm just gonna whiz along. You hear how quiet this machine is. It's fantastic. Right, so we're off. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to piece together pieces and then cut them into four inch squares when they're big enough. So I'll just snip this here. And if there's too much seam here, like there is, look, there's bits sticking out, I'm just going to trim this here so that it doesn't make too much bulk in the finished quilt. And because I like to do this, I just chuck those on the floor and I have a big sweep up at the end. So when I've got a few to press, I'll put that on the ironing board and we'll do all the pressing together. Okay, and we're off. That one's big enough, I think. Put that over there to press. And we'll do some smaller ones now. Okay. Yeah, so I've got a plan for this quilt when it's finished. But it might take a while. Yes, it will. It'll definitely... It's not going to be a quick project, this one. It'll run alongside quite a lot of the other projects I have. So when something's really big like that, I'm just going to take my scissors and cut it off. Like so. Put that to be pressed. And there's another block there that can be sewn onto something here. So I'm not doing it exactly like Robin does. Uh, not at all, in fact. But um, I'm just making it up as I go along. Because that's really what scrap piecing is all about, isn't it? As long as it falls into the colourway of red and pink, um, we can't go wrong. OK, then. So another... Uh, thing that uh, I saw that I really liked is the idea of sewing strips onto a till roll or a paper roll and over in the drawers when I carry on tidying the drawers out I know for a fact that I've got some till roll in there somewhere so when we find that I might make some of those lovely um, ladder pieces or what are they called piano keys or or uh, books bookends or whatever they're called <laughs> Now this top bobbin's about, about to run out, so I'll keep an eye on that in case I start sewing thin air. If they're little tinies like this, they're too small, there's too many seams, so I'm afraid they're going on the floor. Don't get cross with me. It's got to happen. Okay then, so I'm just trying to match up ones that are about the same, oh that's got too many of that in, about the same size like this one and this one they'll go together beautifully i'll show you those two are the same size they'll go together like that and i'll get if i sew some more onto that i'll get two four inch squares out of that there's a cat making a noise over over there over something all four cats are in because it's snow it has snowed it isn't snowing it has snowed and I can't convince anybody to go outside. So these are very small. I don't want the I don't want the um, seams to be too bulky inside. 
so I'll just find ones that match up beautifully like those two do stitch them together and then we'll make some four inch squares now what about the sashing in between I looked at the green I don't actually like it very much I don't think I'm going to do green sashing I'm not somebody who uses black ever or white what about if the sashing was plain red that would look very red wouldn't it but rather gorgeous yeah I think that might look rather gorgeous and I've got loads of red maybe the sashing could be loads and loads of different colours of red and pink I don't know this is what I like about quilting you can make this part up as you go along can't you And you can think about all of these things and then put them up on the design board and see which one works. OK, we've got quite a lot to press now. So I'll plug the iron in and we'll do a bit of pressing. Let's keep an eye on that top bobbin. So this is my lapel mic, which I'm not using. But Sadie's chewed the end here. I'm going to have to keep this away, well away from Sadie. In there for now. Okay, plug the iron in. I'm just going to move you so that you're round where the iron is. So we're going to set the seam there, let's move that out of the way. Set the seam and then we'll just roll that back. And I'm just going to keep making base blocks like this and then I can cut the four inches anywhere I like from there. And sometimes if there's a bit sticking out it doesn't matter at all. I'll we'll just cut that bit off. I will do that now. There's a cat in a box over there. It's kind of annoying me. But what can you do, eh? Cats. So there's some quite small ones as well. But they add interest, don't they, when there's lots of patterns inside. That's almost four inches now but we'll measure it properly. Okay, so I'll keep making these a little bit bigger. It's reminding me, I'm terrible, my memory. What's going on with my memory? It's reminding me of the very first quilt I ever made. Now it's upstairs somewhere. I don't think it's on a bed. I don't, in fact, I'm sure it isn't. But I'm going to find it and uh, we'll talk about that as well because it was a very interesting little experiment in quilting. I've never quilted before and I made um, this uh, particular one. I'll find it because uh, it's easier to talk about it when you can see it. So those are all ironed now. So I'll move you again and we'll go to the cutting mat, yeah? Come on. Okay then, so we'll move all the scraps to one side. And I'll get one down off the wall so that you can see. There's my four inch square. And that one's, you know, it's got loads and loads of different colours in. All pinks and whites and reds, of course. And so I'll pop that one back up there. And then we're going to cut some four inch squares out of this. And I'll use this ruler. I like this ruler. Might have to move you back a tiny bit. There we go. OK then, so is that even four inches? Let's have a look. That's a nice straight edge. So we'll go here. And that's not quite four inches, so that can go on the pile to be added to. You're four inches, aren't you? Yes, you're four inches. 
So, I'm going to do four inches here. No, I'm going to leave that one because the four inches falls right on that edge there. So I'll sew another bit to the end here, then I can cut it in a different place. So that one's, um, let's see, this one might be the same. That's four inches there. And let's do it from this side. That's four inches there. Put that bit over there, just trim this edge straight. It's great having all the right tools and kit, isn't it? So that's another four inch square there. I'll stick that on the wall. Yeah, the, I'm not sure about the sashing. I do want to do sashing though. Uh, I'm not gonna stick them all together. I think that might look far too crazy, even for me. We'll straighten that end up there and do four inches here. I don't mind if they're not straight. In fact, it's probably better if they're not. Wonky is good. So I'll do four inches in the middle of here. And these little bits can go over here and get sewn onto something else. This is a nice one. This one's come together well. Four inches there. And that's another little scrappy block. Isn't it interesting when you do patchwork like this? I remember all of these fabrics and what where they came from and what, what I was doing at the time. <laughs> okay then, so this one's a very big piece, so I'll cut that. I'll cut that here so that we've got a wonky bit there for that four inches. And I'll cut four inches from here. And then we'll straighten that up. In fact, I can get two four inches, can't I? I'll sleeve that one for now. Straighten this edge up. And then four inches on there. It is there. Yeah. Sashing. Leave your suggestions in the comments, please. And how many am I going to need? If they're four inches square and I want to make a huge quilt, I'm going to need quite a lot, aren't I? Four inches. What's a... I'm thinking aloud now. Um, I wonder what size I'm going to make. Because four inches, they'll finish at three and a half, won't they? So, oops, a daisy, wrong way. So I think this is going to be another series. An occasional series, okay? Because I, you know me well enough by now to know that I'm not going to sit and make this from start to finish. That's just not my style at all. Not even a little bit. So I'm going to get this out when I feel like it. Let's move that over slightly. I like how you can work out what how big you want your seams to be using this method. And this one's a simpler block. It's just got four patterns in it instead of eight, <laughs> like some of them have. This one's just going to be a four patch, a wonky four patch. So I'll just trim that edge off there. Yeah, I'm really loving sewing again with this lovely new tuned up machine. What was happening with the machine was the feed dogs, um, the feed dogs went picking up the fabric. So I was having to almost force the fabric through. That one is a four inch square. Yep, that's one off the wall. So I was having to push the fabric through. It was a very unrewarding experience. And so now it's fantastic. Let's have that from that side and then add some more to that. I'll just clean this end up. It's, it's almost like a painting, isn't it? You've got to sort of work out where you want your jigsaw bits to go. And you're in charge, so you can make the cuts wherever you want to. So that's another one to be sewn on. Yeah, so we'll have a look at this in a minute. And then I'll get on and do a load more. And we'll come back from this to this from time to time, see how we go. I'll do one more because then that makes us a block. Oh no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. doesn't make anything like a block. Let's do this one. 
do have this one a bit wonky. Take our four inches there and square that up. There we go. Oh, that's a nice one. Here we go, there's a whole lot of scrappy blocks. I'm going to need a whole lot more. And that was the me pinning them onto the green fabric to see if I liked the green sashing. Uh, I haven't quite made my mind up about that yet. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to ask you guys. <laughs> I like the wonky ones, look. I like the wonky ones. It's quite, they're mostly wonky. <laughs> and so many fabrics. I should get rid of quite a lot of my little scraps and bits and pieces this way. So I'm going to carry on with this from time to time. I'll create a separate playlist for it maybe. We'll call it, I don't know, Red Scrappy Quilt or something. And it'll be something that I just have on the go from time to time. I don't need to finish it in a hurry. There's no need. But it will be a way of using up those scraps. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll catch you next time with the scrappy quilt.